Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. For those of you that are returning, um, thank you for reaching out, for commenting, for liking, for subscribing, all of the above. Um, if, if you are on LinkedIn, follow me there um, and you can learn a little bit more about what I do and who I work with, things like that. Please also feel free to visit my website. You can see, you know, what kind of services I offer and the things that um, come up. I try to upload all the new and current YouTube videos there as well, okay? So if there's anything that you wanna see, please comment. Um, that will help my algorithm. That being said, um, I am gonna go ahead and jump right into uh, invoicing. I know a lot of people have asked me about monthly invoicing and closing out a project and, and what that looks like. So right now, I'm just opening a few tabs. I always work with multiple tabs open. You'll know that's something I say, um, and I do try to point things out. It's not possible to possibly give you everything all in one video, but I do try to point things out as I'm working and doing these on-screen tutorials, okay? So um, it's, it's for you to kind of play back and kind of get used to it. It's a lot of times you don't, always know these random tips and tricks so I try to share them as as I do them okay so that being said I, I do want to bring up a couple of things so we have um, assuming you're an interior design firm or architect firm for that matter um, when you have projects okay we we know that studio is com comprised of two modules that's how I like to teach in okay we have the project management side and we have the accounting side okay they work hand in hand to provide you with one of the best softwares out there right now okay it's it's such a powerful tool to manage your business and um assuming that you've set things up correctly and know how to navigate within within studio based on how you do business it's probably one of the best tools out there okay and i don't get paid for saying that so um anyway this is the project side. Um, I will also show you that within the project side, for those of you that have the full studio, um, you'll note that there's activities, okay, and time billing. I like to, and this is just everything, I, I didn't add more, so some of these are old, but I'm using them for the purpose of this tutorial, okay? And what I want you to understand is that, uh, Tracking your time within your studio is something that I highly encourage everybody to do. If you're not doing it already, you don't need a team to begin using this um, time billing, okay? I, I even track personal time or time away from the office, general overhead, all of that, okay? And there's ways to set that up, okay? So these activities here is for time billing, meaning count, um, time, time billing that you actually spent and maybe any reimbursables and odds and ends, okay? And that is uh, something I will walk over because there's a number of different ways and I, I, I see people often miss this. So I wanna kind of drill down and give you a little bit more detail. And this is going to cover invoicing, okay? When I say monthly invoicing, this is what I'm talking about. Um, and, and this is something that I encourage everybody to do monthly, okay? So for me and everybody that I teach, I usually say have all your, at least for the time billing. I, I care more so that the time billing is captured on or by the fifth of the month, okay, for the month prior. So I'm doing this video, it is, um, it is the 30th of March, 2023, and right now we're getting ready to start uh, preparing to do our invoicing, okay? And what, the, what that means is, like for me, I care about the time billing, and actually a lot of these, I wonder if they're all invoiced out. Hold on, um, let's go into time billing. And a lot of these have been invoiced out, but I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and just pretend that I'm gonna go ahead and invoice these out, okay? And I, I wanna show you what I do. Oops, let's actually, yeah, there's still only two. Okay, so what I do from here is I go ahead and run this. I usually run it, you know, like I said, I try to do it by the first of the month. That way I can capture 
Um, anybody that's missing time, I, I usually remind if, if, if it's a bigger company and they, they have a team, this is now the time that I use to kind of send out the email before I get ready to run payroll, right? So it's the 30th of the month. I, uh, for everybody I work with, I run payroll from the 1st through the 15th, paid on the 16th, and then the 16th through the last day of the month, payable on the 1st, okay? It's an easy way to keep the cutoffs clean. They're nice, and that way it forces everybody that is on payroll, whether it's payroll, 1099 consultant, all of the above, it forces them to kind of have all their time in because I use this to pay. I use this to pay everybody, and I use this to bill my clients, okay? So typically I say, okay, we're gonna get ready to run the preliminary time billing. Right now, there's not a lot that you can see here, but I, I'm doing that for a certain reason. So this is what I what my time billing looks like. See, I, I'm these are tests entries, and this is kind of what we are we're preliminary invoicing our clients. So I run these, and if sometimes there's multiple pages, or sometimes I see a lot, sometimes maybe 20 pages, depends on how big your firm is. But this is basically what I'm using to run this. I, I save this, I just basically save it to PDF, and I'll just show you, okay? And I'm gonna save that, okay? I save it to my computer, and then I email, or I send this off to the owner, okay? Or if you have multiple designers, I will run it by designer, okay, or by project. And you know who leads what, or you should, because it should be in your studio if you don't, okay? And if, you, if that statement does not, uh, click with you, revisit some of my setup uh, videos, okay? So this is what I have all the designers or the team redline. What I mean by redline is they're coming in here, they're making sure, like I'm, I wanna make sure that they have the final say in what actually goes out to these clients, okay? So if they don't like certain verbiage, they don't like certain things to be shown, that's fine, they get that back to me and then I can prepare the time billing, okay? So that is how I go through time billing. I will have additional videos that show, you know, this in bigger detail, but this is a walkover. And then the next thing that I make sure of, and again, this probably is a little more lenient. The reason why I care about the time billing here is because I will go in and redate, and I'm not gonna get into how you do that because um, that's probably a little bit more advanced, but I would redate everything because I want to invoice everything for the prior month by the last day of the month, okay? So even though I said we're doing it on or by the fifth of the month, I want to um, backdate all of these to the prior month, right? We want to capture our time, the time of anybody that we work with in the right month for obvious reasons. And again, we're looking, we're talking to review, to update our processes, okay? Not something that I preach in a lot of things that I do. So um, when we're talking in terms of the project, I know people are really um, specific of how they build their projects, okay? For me, it really kind of depends. If I have a third-party shipping and receiving company um, or if I am going to take them into um, our warehouse here at the office um, if I am going to have it go directly to the client when that applies okay it's usually not because a lot of the bigger ones we don't we're not going to have it ever go directly to them right for obvious reasons so that being said I usually will invoice certain things out when I know the cost is final okay and what is final like like here, you can see that we've only paid a portion of this and we still have a balance. That probably was invoiced prematurely. The reason why I say that is you, you wanna be mindful. You want to invoice the client when you know the amount that we have paid the vendor is good and final. And I don't mean just posted. I mean, we know that it's cleared an account. We, it's cleared our bank or credit card rec reconciliation, okay? So I usually don't post these payments any earlier than I know that they really go. Because those of you know, sometimes we might place an order, we might know what it is. That is that is temporary until it's shipped out. 
So for those of you that have like fabric or other types of vendors that maybe estimate the freight, just like we do to our clients, I, I try to estimate something so it's not such a shock and then it kind of gives us the ability to adjust, okay? So I wanna make sure that we've paid the vendor in full before I ever invoice the client. A lot of you like to wait until it's actually delivered. I'm okay with that. Um, the times that I might do it exactly when we know it's final is when cash flow is an issue um, because obviously that, that you're gonna wanna track that very carefully. I know a lot of people want to um, process sales tax a number of different ways and that's a video that's coming up next, okay? Um, we'll get into that, okay? So at the end of the day, everything on a project, just so you know, needs to be invoiced and look exactly like this before we make it inactive. Okay, I want to know that we don't owe the vendor any money, we don't owe, or the client does not owe us any money, and that we've fully accounted for it, meaning, you know, there is an invoice. Okay, that's when I usually know if this project is over and I've ran my reports, I can make the items inactive. But in, in terms of invoicing, I like to just kind of watch it, in, and you want to monitor this because this is something that, you know, is done a number of different ways. If you're going to do everything on install day, which I, I, I know people do that, that is fine too, okay? There's a number of different ways people invoice, okay? But just know this, and, and I'm going to try to say this a, a, a lot. Um, once you invoice something, okay, do not void it, okay? you need to really be mindful of the dates. So when I invoice something, I, I know some of the people know how to tweak this and put it back on an invoice or another invoice or the same invoice number, right? Um, that's kind of okay. However, you wanna always make for sure that the invoice has not gone through sales tax already. That is a really big no-no and pro probably one of the largest uh, reasons why people have issues with sales tax, okay? Once it's invoiced, that is final. That's why you can't tweak, if you look, if something is invoiced already, we can't go in and change the client pricing, right? It's invoiced. When it's a proposal and until something's invoiced, it is still revisable, changeable, um, updatable, all of the above. However, when it's invoiced, you can assume that that is good and final. The reason for that being is I wanna make sure that it's clear and that you'll hear me say this on a lot of videos, okay? When you go in and create proposals, you can create a thousand items and a thousand proposals today. That is, That does nothing to your financials, okay? Those are proposals. We're proposing it to a client. That means they don't owe it to us. It's us saying, hey, this is what it's gonna cost you. And until they put money down on something, right, which is a client deposit, then that's usually our cue then to order and now pay our vendor per the order that is tied to this project, okay? And until we invoice it, you can change this. Like you can add other costs. You can say, oh, it came in damaged, you know, whatever the case may be. There's a lot of different circumstances that can happen on a project. So basically, you can change things. You can add more additional costs, freight, update, whatever. But once you invoice it, that is final because you don't see that, but that is when Studio recognizes the income and expense. Okay, let me rephrase that. Studio does not recognize income or expense until you invoice the client, even if the invoice is zero, okay? I repeat this over and over and over and I recommend that you write it down because even if it does not make sense to you now, it will over time or at least as long as you follow me, it will eventually make sense, I promise, okay? Now, um, when it's invoiced, okay, you have to understand that's when we recognize this is the income that or this is the income and then we've spent so this is the expense 
and the amount attributable to sales tax then goes to sales tax payable, okay? My sales tax payable for everybody I deal with is spot on to the penny. It might be a couple of cents off for rounding purposes, but it's pretty much to the penny, okay? And if yours is not, that means there's voiding and a bunch of things going on that probably shouldn't, okay? So um, that is my blip on invoicing, when you should invoice, um, time billing and what that looks like, okay? And if you have questions or want to see more, um, I will be making additional videos. Some will be um, um, extended purchases, but the rest of them, I am gonna continue to push them out and keep them for free, at least to for the general um, information, okay? And if you have any other questions, you can follow up with me on my website. So like, post, subscribe, um, and please comment on any topics that you want me to cover. Thank you.